Local 4 News starts now with a breaking news alert. Breaking news from the nation's capital, where we are awaiting the start of swearing-in ceremony for Supreme Court Justice Katanji Brown Jackson. She will become the first black woman to join the U.S. Supreme Court. Her swearing-in ceremony coincides with the start of retirement for outgoing Justice Stephen Beyer. We'll bring it to you in its entirety when it happens. Meanwhile, here at home, breaking news this noon, the ongoing saga continues for the state representative, Jewel Jones. The Inkster Democrat was back in court this morning for sentencing after violating his probation. Let's get to Rod Maloney. He joins us now live with what happened in court today. Rod? Yeah, good morning, Rhonda. Now, we were in Howell this morning for that court hearing. We're now in Inkster here where uh, jo Joel Jones actually lives. Uh, he was in court because he tested positive for alcohol back on June 1st. Now, part of his probation after his uh, his plea agreement with the Livingston County court system was that he not drink alcohol or take drugs for his two year probation. Well, when he tested positive, uh, they knew that this was going to be a problem. So uh, within days, he checked himself into a, uh, a drug rehab facility in the city of Detroit. And he let that out in court today. And uh, in court today, he pled guilty to the charge of probation violation. Uh, he has spent a lot of time in front of Judge Michael Hattie, and Judge Hattie essentially said to him uh, that there's a lot you need to do to fix here. He sentenced him to 30 days of jail time, uh, but what he did was he coupled that with the rehab. So uh, the, the rehab will end next week for Joel Jones, and the, that, that will be considered his jail time served. Uh, so he will stay in that rehab until uh, July 7th. Now, outside the courthouse, he talked to us about what prompted him to drink alcohol and what his reaction to all of this is. Uh, my grandmother passed on uh, May 31st. The test was the morning, June 1st, I think around 6 a.m. Um, but, you know, I'm just, I'm just thanking God just for the grace of the judge, um, for everyone keeping their 11 hours of protection around my family during this time, too. Um, you say we're on the road to recovery um, and, and just keep us in your thoughts and prayers, you know. Getting 30 keep days, it wrapped up. Do you, is that all you have to say? Yeah, probably after. Let me complete the program. I got a whole lot to say to everybody. Well, he does have a morning radio show on 910 Superstation in Detroit. Now, in case you didn't hear what he said, he was saying that essentially that his grandmother had passed away. And that's what prompted him to have the alcohol that he wasn't supposed to have. And so now he's going to spend, uh, he's already spent almost a month, and then he'll spend the next few days uh, in the rehab center in Detroit. Uh, and he will continue his probation thereafter. Uh, as far as the legislature is concerned, he still serves in the legislature, uh, but he is not on any committees. And so essentially what he does there is vote when the time comes. So that's what we have. We'll certainly have reaction to all of this coming up on Local 4 News at 5. So reporting live from Inkster, Rod Malone, Local 4. All right, Rod, thank you. Also new this noon, General Motors and the UAW have reached a deal that averts a strike that could have happened today. A group of subsystems employees at GM plants in Hamtramck, Orion Township, Flint, and Lansing were threatening a strike if a contract deal wasn't reached between the automaker and the UAW by 10 o'clock this morning. Subsystems employees help the assembly process. GM says that it won't talk about the details of the deal until it's ratified. Former Governor Rick Snyder pleads the Fifth Amendment in federal court during a civil case in connection to the Flint water crisis. This is video from in Ann Arbor. That's Governor Snyder, former Governor Snyder there leaving court. He was scheduled to testify in a lawsuit against two engineering companies who did consulting work for the city of Flint. Snyder was called as a witness in federal court two days after the Michigan Supreme Court in a separate case said criminal indictments against him and others were in valid. The busy holiday weekend travel rush is on and for many flying there is a lot of concern this noon because many airlines have been canceling flights and with millions traveling due to the holiday weekend it could create some big problems. Our consumer investigator Hank Winchester is live at Detroit's Metro Airport and Hank I understand on top of all of this Delta pilots are also raising concern. 
They certainly are, Rhonda, an informational picket. They say they're being overworked and they're understaffed, although that is not affecting travel today here at Metro. Take a look here at the big board. Uh, the good news right now is every flight is scheduled to take off. This morning, though, we did spot a few cancellations to Miami and also to Chicago. Take a live look over my shoulder. The airport is a little bit busier today than we've seen it in weeks past, and we are told that this weekend, well, it could be challenging. Uncertainty at Detroit Metro today, right before the busy 4th of July holiday weekend. Some flights already canceled. Delta pilots staging an informational picket. Passengers just hoping to take off. It is what it is, but you just come and hope for the best, you know. Delta pilots saying they're being overworked post pandemic, and we do know that employee shortages, well, it's caused some of the problems with the airlines, including Delta. Today, Delta CEO saying, if you've encountered delays and cancellations recently, I apologize. We've spent years establishing Delta as the industry leader in reliability, and though the majority of our flights continue to operate on time, this level of disruption and uncertainty is unacceptable. Back out here live, Delta also saying they expect operational challenges. That's what they're calling it during the next few days and say that passengers flying between July 1st and 4th could take travel waivers. Uh, right now, though, out of Metro, the good news is, as you can see, that I take this obligation freely without any mental reservation or purpose of evasion. And that I will well and faithfully discharge the duties of the office on which I'm about to enter. And that I will well and faithfully discharge the duties of the office on which I am about to enter. So help me God. So help me God. Thank you very much. And now I'll turn things over to Justice Breyer. The judicial oath, will you raise your right hand, please? Thank you. I, Ketanji Brown Jackson. I, Ketanji Brown Jackson. Do solemnly swear. Do solemnly swear. That I will administer justice. That I will administer justice. Without respect to persons. Without respect to persons. And do equal right. And do equal right. To the poor and to the rich. To the poor and to the rich. And that I will faithfully and impartially. And that I will faithfully and impartially. Discharge and perform. Discharge and perform. All the duties. All the duties. Incumbent upon me. Incumbent upon me. As an associate justice of the Supreme Court of the United States. As an associate justice of the Supreme Court of the United States. Under the Constitution. Under the Constitution. And laws of the United States. And laws of the United States. So help me God. So help me God. And now on behalf of all of the members of the court, I am pleased to welcome Justice Jackson to the court and to our common calling. And you have been watching the official swearing in ceremony for new Supreme Court Justice Katanji Brown Jackson. You can head over to click on Detroit.com as we have our continuing coverage of that on live streaming for you right now if you would like to continue watching. Meantime, you probably want to stick around because you need to know about Brandon's forecast for not only today but for all the holiday weekend plans, Brandon. Yeah, and temperatures are warming quickly, Rhonda. It's interesting that where we saw more rain yesterday, we are seeing higher humidity and the heat indices. We have middle 80s, most locations, but most of that rain yesterday was north of M59. So notice 86 degrees in Mount Clemens feels like 92, whereas 85 temperature at Metro Airport feels like 85. So the heat index is that combination of heat and humidity has sort of that feels like the opposite of a wind chill, but it stresses the body out and we'll see more and more humidity pouring in tomorrow. Storms are deflecting away on this last day of June. Whew, nice and warm 88 degrees at two o'clock. Sort of a song theme. Summer breeze. The heat is on. Feeling hot, hot, hot and soak up the sun. 90 degrees today, Rhonda. Tomorrow we are tracking some Friday storms.
Okay, thank you, Brandon. We know the grass needs it, that's for sure. Still to come, the three-day NATO summit wrapped up in Madrid today. What we are learning about plans to bolster the military presence in Europe.